Hi! In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about a couple of common gotchas that people run into when they're programming the coding. So, first, let's go into the load world and find our empty world. I'm just going to create an area that lets us play around with some things. Okay. I like the grass terrain. Pick that. There. Now I have a nice little world to play around in. What I want to work on today is just show you very simply how to program a character to move towards an apple in this case. And the reason that can be a gotcha is that there are just some certain cases that where things don't work as you expect them to. And I want to show you those and explain to you why they're happening that way and what you can do to work around them. So first let me add my character. I'm going to add the cycle since I like the cycle. And I'm going to add a couple of apples in the world. Now right clicking on the cycle to go into programming, I'm going to say when he sees an apple, I want him to move toward it. So move and toward. And then when he gets to the apple, he's going to bump into it. So when that happens, I'll have him eat it. So, and eat. So he sees the apple, he's going to move toward it. When he bumps into the apple, he's going to eat it, so it'll go away. Um, exit back out of that and run this. And you see, he sees the apple, he goes running after it. He runs into it, eats it, and he just stops completely ignoring this other apple. Well, if you think about it for a moment, it's kind of obvious what's going on here, is that he can only see in front of him. He doesn't have eyes in the back of his head, so he doesn't see this other apple. So, what we can do is we can tell him, well, you know, if you don't see any apples, how about just wandering around? So, go back to the programming, go to the editing UI, program him, and here we're going to add move wander. Now here's a couple of things. We've got two different move statements here. We've got one that says when you see an apple move toward, you've also got move wander. Now these in some ways conflict, but what will happen is that this one will take priority since it's higher in the list than this one, but it will only take priority when he actually sees the apple. So let's go ahead and run this. I'll show you what I mean. He runs up to the apple he sees, he gets it, and he starts just wandering around. Now eventually he'll turn around because he's wandering and he'll see this other apple. So he'll come flying down, eat it, and then because he doesn't see any apples at all, he just continues to wander around. Now if we go back into the editor, program, and if we take this and move it up above, now when we try to run, You'll see what happens is he just wanders around because now that it's above the other move, it has priority. Okay, one other kind of quirky thing that you may have noticed. Let's move this back down to where it belongs. Is that I completely left the one side of this blank. What that means is that there's no test there. Here we're testing to see if we see an apple. Here we're testing to see if we bump an apple. Here we don't we don't test at all. We just want that all this to happen. So the leaving it blank is kind of a shortcut. But what you can do is up here there's the always tile. And if you put that there, that's exactly the same as leaving it blank. So if you see that in somebody else's coding and you're not used to using it, don't worry about it. It's the exact same thing as being blank. It just means I want this always to happen. So there you are, a couple of gotchas to keep in mind. The always tile acts like, um, just like leaving it blank, which means that, yes, we always want this to happen. And when you have multiple moves, the one that's highest has priority. Now this applies to other things too. So if you have two lines that shoot at different targets, if they're trying to shoot at the same time, the one that's higher will take priority and you will shoot at that target. Anyway, have fun.